Okay, excuse my wet hair. I have to get this out before the clock strikes midnight tonight. Um, I felt very led to do this today, um, so I'm going to do it. Basically, in my book, there has to be more than this. Um, I talk about strongholds, and I talk about tearing down every stronghold that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, and to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And in my devotional by Jackie Hill Perry, Upon Waking, she talks about that very thing, and she explains it really well. So I thought I will just read it to you, if that's okay, and then say what I felt led to say. Okay. The um, scripture verse is Proverbs 21, 22. One who is wise can go up against the city of the mighty and pull down the stronghold in which they trust. Strongholds are built as refuge against intrusion, as protection from whatever enemy decided against peace. In a city, a stronghold is a wise development, seeing that it is busy with women who laugh, men who love, and babies that crawl everywhere and get into everything. These things are worth protecting. In history, some strongholds were a wall that encircled a place. An army couldn't attack a city without sketching out a plan that involved getting through, over, or around the stronghold. Bringing down the stronghold was half the battle, literally. But if they did, the women who laugh, the men who love, babies that crawl and now cry were as vulnerable as the city they once considered safe. That word, vulnerable, a trigger, an enemy we refuse to welcome, but is in fact a requirement. I say that because in many ways you are your own city. Inside of you exists laughter and love, instability and immaturity. You're naturally committed to the protection of these things at some point in your life, maybe even now, your project of choice has been to gather bricks or stone, whichever works best, and stack them around the city you call self. A few of the bricks were built the first time you knew how it felt to be unloved. Other bricks were added when the sentence, you can't depend on anybody but yourself, entered your mind and then settled there. That thought was an enemy you made a neighbor. Sins within you and against you inspired your construction. In Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, a few or many messy men were casting doubt on the authority and authenticity of the apostle. Believing him unsent and insincere was an idea that if believed would keep the truth he carried from being believed to. The ideas, reasons, and arguments against Paul were the stronghold. In other words, strongholds are words, sentences, paragraphs, fanciful stories from earth that the heart and mind commit themselves to. Every word is a brick, every brick is a distortion of the truth, and every wall it builds must be torn down with a divine strategy. A supernatural weapon, as Paul puts it, the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion that raised itself against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. When a stronghold is built in the mind, what is at stake is the mind having the knowledge of God in it. The stronghold exists as protection from something dangerous coming in. However, it is the very thing that keeps the knowledge of God out. Tear them down with the truth about Christ. By the Spirit, as revealed in the scriptures, every brick has to go so that Christ, the King of glory, can come in. Vulnerability. <laughs> That's hard. It's really hard to dispel the lies once they have settled in your heart and made themselves at home. That lie that says, I'm the only person I can rely on. 
Because let's face it, how many instances have happened that have proven that to be true? How many people have disappointed you and let you down and not been reliable? But if we do the work with our Holy Spirit, with our Heavenly Father, with our therapist, to process through all of those instances, all the lies, and tear down every stronghold and take every thought captive to obey Christ. There's hope that we can open up our hearts and love. Because what does it say? The very beginning, the very first time that God created us, he looked at us and was like, it is not good for you to be alone. He created an entire gender to support that to take care of us so that we'd have each other. We need each other. And we're so quick to put up those strongholds so thick and so big and so wide surrounding us to keep everybody out. But one thing that I've learned recently, a beautiful soul told me, it just blew up in my spirit recently, was that our self-defense mechanisms are there to protect us, not to tell us what's best for us. Because what, we will get to the point where we've kept everybody out so much so that we're lonely and we're hard-hearted. But if we open our hearts in love, and I tell you this, I've realized recently, I've processed through some things, and I realized that when I look at other people through the filter of love, the love that I have for them, I realize that they're just humans too. They're fallible. They're going to hurt me and it's okay. That's the risk you take to love. But when I look at them through, you're going to hurt me. I can't rely on you. Where's that coming from? It's coming from a place of hurt and pain and fear and ego, pride. Don't you dare play me. Don't you make me look like the fool. That's coming from a place of pride and fear because it doesn't feel good. But the risk of getting attached is worth it when you get to experience the joys that seeing them through love brings. I hope this is encouraging. I hope that you Start off your 2024 letting go of old patterns and energize for the new year, setting your intentions for your um, boundaries to protect your mental health, but also letting people in. I just pray that this is the best year yet and that you have an amazing, happy new year.